Okay, so we're set to record and <clears throat> this session is, uh, we're gonna look at the SARS that are available to us in the, in the Atlantic provinces this year. There's quite a few of them. There's several new ones this year. <clears throat> we're gonna be looking at the SARS uh, in sequence here alphabetically. There are 24 pacers three trotters. That's a lot for a small area like ours with limited number of uh, mares. Uh, although the number of mares has been picking up a little bit over the last couple of years. And we did have uh, a mare subsidy program this past winter that's added a few mares, as I understand. And the people who are uh, fortunate enough to get in on that one uh, uh, have added the mares. Now, uh, Hopefully uh, uh, that will help. But the problem with the situation we have in the Maritimes is that we have, for instance, last year we had three stallions that um, bred over half of the available mares. That doesn't leave a whole lot for the other ones. And every time there's a new stallion comes in, of course, Tennessee is for everybody to go to the new stallion and, and uh, we've got two or three more new stallions this year. So it, uh, it's, it's pretty common elsewhere to do that sort of thing. Most breeders tend to gravitate towards the newer stallions, the first crop, because they feel that, you know, they've got the credentials to produce something special. But most of the time, those same breeders don't really give any consideration to the, the actual pedigree involved. And what the what the resulting pedigree will look like. They're more interested, perhaps, in the, in the attraction of the individual that they produce in terms of putting it through a sale, and which certainly would be improved uh, if uh, uh, if that stallion was popular and and produced good individuals. That still doesn't guarantee that that individual that they produce is uh, going to make it to the races, and. Um, so as a result, even the best of stallions have a lot of uh, progeny that just don't get there. Um, the average success rate in North America uh, per, per an individual yearling crop runs between five and 8%. When I say success rate, I mean horses that are more likely to pay for themselves over there over their uh, racing career, make $100,000 or so. And so that's not very good. And when you consider that a lot of those good ones are raised by people like Hanover, Winback, uh, the larger farms represent probably a third of those yearlings every year. That means that the little guys are not, don't have a very good success rate. They're probably, in somewhere in the two to three or four percent success rate. In other words, they get for every 20 year, 20 folds they, they raise, they might get two or three at the most, uh, maybe five at the very most that are any good. And you see that a lot. There are some, there are some um, local readers on PEI that I'm aware of that people like Daryl Nicholson, uh, Eldred Nicholson, and uh, Wendell Williams, who are uh, very conscientious in terms of their pedigree work, and it shows in their success rates every year. They have a, from a three or four falls, they usually get a pretty decent stake winners, sometimes two. And that's what happens when you do your homework on pedigrees. If you just simply go to a SAR on the basis of personal attraction, looks, or whatever it is, uh, then you're taking a chance you're, that you're going to be in that low percentage success rate. So what I'm going to try to do is point out to you for each of these stallions where I think, what kind of mares I think they should be bred to. Some of them are already active and you can see what they've produced so far. And then you'll be able to, I'll be able to show you just how that works in terms of pedigree. Um, the whole thing boils down to the fact that you have to get the right stallion for the, for the mare. 
It's a big decision on your part as breeders. In fact, it's the most important decision you will have to make because it's a finite decision. Once it's done and the foal is in the mare, you can't change it. You can change everything else about how you raise the mare. And most breeders are very adept at raising good foals. The guys on the island are doing a great job. For the yearling sales, you see beautiful colts, great shape, well raised. They can certainly do that aspect of it. It's the pedigree side of the question that perhaps they're not paying too much attention to. Because there are a lot of, as I say, there are a lot of yearlings that never make it. And the breeders tend to say, oh, well, that's the trainer's fault. But the bottom line here is that if you make a wrong pedigree decision, it doesn't matter what trainer you give it to, how well you raise it, what you feed it. It's a wrong pedigree based on the history of similar pedigrees. Then you can't change that. It's a loss. And if you pile up those losses on a mare, very soon there's two things that happen. You've ruined the mare and you've ruined your own reputation as a breeder. So the conscientious breeder who's in it for the long run and wants to establish a reputation for producing not only good foals, but ones that will, will succeed, will do their homework. And the homework consists of pedigree analysis. Now, we have, uh, I've done a lot of work over the years on this sort of thing. I created a pedigree program I'm going to use here called PM Equine to demonstrate the, the pedigrees and so forth. But I've been in it for a long time. I started back in the 1980s looking at pedigrees. And I was the pedigree reader for the old PI Coal Sticks. And I wondered what it was, you know, as an engineer, what it was that did it work. So I, I read up. And a couple of books I recommend that the breeders use um, to uh, get up a little bit, at least on the history of pedigrees. The Wallace Registries, which were written back in 1868, the second volume has an essay by, the, by James Wallace that is, yeah, it's, it's written in old style, uh, an old style way, very flowery and one thing or another, but it has some good information in it on what it basically it's called, How Shall We Breed the Trotter? The second book that I came across on a similar vein was The Care and Training of the Trotter and Pacer, which is, was published in 1868, 1968, almost 100 years later. And by James Harriman was the, was the author. And there was a chapter in there on breeding. And in that chapter, they picked up on much of what John Wallace had to say. And the author condensed it all into one particular statement. And that statement was, return to the sire the best blood of his dam. I'll get back to that shortly. But in order to do, understand where uh, that particular uh, quotation and the importance of it, you have to understand sire lines. You have to be familiar with sire lines. So first of all, for the next five minutes or so, I'm just going to run through, do a quick run through on sire lines for you. As we'll be talk, I'll be talking about this sire line or that sire line and how they combine together in certain pedigrees to produce uh, the package that makes a, a good individual. You're probably familiar with the fact that all of the North American sire lines go back to one individual, a guy called Hamiltonian. It's the grandson of a thoroughbred that was imported, uh, called Messenger, imported from England. And he had five sons of importance that have extended his influence to, to the standard bred world. And they were George Wilkes, lectioneer, happy medium, direct dictator, and Strathmore. Now, this line particularly, this actually the line is basically dead. There's a little bit of it going on in, the, in, in Europe, actually in French sires. Uh, the election year line is very much active through the AB, as is the happy medium line through Peter the Great, primarily with trotters. 
the dictator line with Billy Durrett is dead. And the Strathmore line was exported to, to uh, Australia. And it too is pretty much tied up. So let's have a look here. And I, uh, on the chart here, these are all the significant individuals in these lines. And the ones in red are the stallions that are here in the maritime. So you can see how, where they fit in. I said the Abdale, Abdale line, the Ab line is uh, it's pretty extensive. Here's the Ab line. It has, he had two, basically two major sons. One of them led to Big Towner. Now Big Towner is a line that's essentially dead, although it's very much alive in, in the maternal sides of pedigrees. And Big Towner himself was responsible for one of the best sires that was ever brought to the Maritimes. So then, uh, it was a horse called Drop Off. He was brought here by Wally Wood. And when I talked to Wally Wood about Big Towner and asked him why he brought him, he said, well, he's free-legged and he's got a fast half mile record. And I think those two attributes will be very much a plus for, for horses in the Maritimes. And he was right. But perhaps what he didn't appreciate, or maybe he did, because Wally was never really all that deep into penguins. He was very much a confirmation guy and wanted to uh, produce top individuals, good lookers, and good gated horses, obviously, as well. But we'll have a look at uh, that drop off when I've gone through this uh, line here, because I want to show you. It's a very good example of that saying of return to the side of the best part of his dam. So here we have the Abedale line, which is pretty extensive as you can see here. Um, Abedale had Haldale. And Haldale in turn produced a number of individuals, top individuals. Good time, which is a line which is dead now. Dale Frost, which became the Meta Skipper line, which is very much active, as you can see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Almost half of the pacing sires in, in the Maritimes are Meta Skipper line sires. And that's what you call it these days, Meta Skipper line. But the Meta Skipper line basically broke into uh, three parts. There was the Albatross line. Albatross is arguably one of the best sons of. Met a skipper, top racehorse in his day. And he went on, had an iatros, an iatros annihilator, and then all of a sudden the line stopped. Now, those individuals were all very important in the maternal sides of, of standard race, but there are no longer any sire lines, active sires in North America from that sire line. And there's Most Happy Fala, another son of Met a skipper. And he, in turn, split into some significant. Uh, branches. There's the Cam Fellow line, the Oil Burner, better known as the No Nukes line, and the Tyler B line, which is has a fairly limited uh, um, extension here. Um, most recent of which is Fear the Dragon, standing in Ohio, and it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere. The French Chef line, same thing, is basically ended with Jenna's Beach Boy. Uh, there are some minor sires by Dennis Beach Boy, but they're not, they're standing in Indiana, Ohio, Iowa, places like that. They're not going to produce anything special, I don't think. But well, you never know, because always be Mickey is Indiana bred. Who would have thought that? And uh, actually, if you go back and go down here and you look at Art Escape, his son Yankee Cruiser stood initially in Ohio. Uh, and then was moved to Pennsylvania where he produced Sweet Lou. But I mean, so these uh, sires are standing in other places other than Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Ontario, perhaps. Some of these sires that are in these lesser jurisdictions ultimately could produce something special, just like always be Mickey. Anyway, they, the Meta Skipper line, as you say, is quite extensive. The biggest component of that is the No Nukes line. As you can see, Western Hanover stood at the Hanover Shoe Farms, as did Western Ideal. 
And from them have sprung a number of branches. How far they continue, we don't know. The Western ideal line looks like uh, Osby Mickey is going to extend that the way he's going so far. Rock and Roll Hanover, however, seems to have kind of got stuck. He died early, which was unfortunate, but um, he has a lot of he has a lot of sons out there. But most of the sons of Rock and Roll Hanover are standing in smaller jurisdictions and probably won't get the, the, the response there from the mayors that would allow them to produce a son to carry on the line. That's very much the soap, the, the, the situation so far. American Ideal has, a, has got some sons that so far really aren't doing a whole lot either. Uh, shadow Play up here has got a couple in the Maritimes here, but they're the only ones by Shadow Play that are standing. And uh, these others, these are all, these stars are really going nowhere in terms of producing sons. Um, up here, of course, the big one here is Better's Delight. His sons are basically starting to uh, get up to speed. And at this point, there's no real significant sons of Better's Delight on the horizon, although Tall Dark Stranger has gone to uh, out of shoe farms and that just may be the son that he's been waiting for. He's been around for a while. He's had produced a lot of great horses and a lot of great sons. But for some reason, the ones that are standing are very kind of hit and miss. You'll see what happens with the, with Tall Dark Stranger. It just might be the, be the one to extend that line. Other than that, the Cam Fellow line really doesn't have anything that's uh, um, likely to extend beyond, uh, extend the line beyond. And that's the nature of sire lines. As you see, if you go down here to the Adios, there's Brad Hanover. He had all kinds of good sons, but only Warren Breeze produced something special in Falcon Sealster. And Falcon Sealster only had one really good one that turned out to be a sire, McCarl. And now mccarl has got McQuicken. There were all kinds of sons uh, were sent to stud for these sires, but they didn't get the job done. Same with entry key adios. As you see, we got down to Arts Place. Arts Place had a ton of top individuals. But for some unknown reason, one of the lesser ones, Art Escape, has become the sire lines extender here. And it goes to Sweet Lou. Life Sign, another major son of Abercrombie, was a deep, very good sire. But he only had really had one son that extended the line and that was real desire. And he's, he had tell all and a couple of other lesser ones that are just not gonna get the job done either. So the, the Adios line is basically in the hands of Sweet Lou at this point. There are no major sons of art major, a couple of um, lesser ones up in uh, Indiana, places like that, but nothing, Nothing in the in the major states. Sports writer and uh, is not standing in Ontario. He has uh, Jimmy Freight. Whether or not that's going to work or not, Jimmy's having problems in the stud shed with his fertility. Um, so who knows? But for now, Sweet Sweet Lou is looks like the the future of the of the Adios line. Sweet Lou and the Quicket anyway. Anyway, those are, those are the pacing star lines. If you look at the twining star lines, Peter the Great had a couple, two sons of consequence, Peter Scott and Peter Volo. The Peter Scott line is the one that brought us Muscle Hill. It took, it took a lot of stars in a row to get there. And we have a son of Muscle Hill here on the island from standing for his first year, Legion of Honor. He also had, uh, this is Valley Victory here, he had, Dances victory. Now, Valley Victory had a number of sons, very good ones, but none of them have extended, seemed like they're going to be line extenders. Dancer victory, victory, on the other hand, was basically a failure as a sire, but he did have self possessed. From there has come Cantab Hall, Father Patrick, and now Greenshoe. The other Speedy Scott line up here is Arnie Almhurst. That was the one that brought us Pine Chip, great, tremendous horse and dream vacation. But that's a line too is essentially dying out. 
So these are the two lions, Muscle Hill and his sons, and uh, uh, the ones through Cantab Hall that, that are dominant in trotting pedigrees uh, through Peter Scott. On the Peter Volo side, we got a similar situation where things are kind of coming to an end up here. This is a very concerning one to me because this is the Stars Pride line. It's given us a couple of the stars that's standing here in, in the Maritimes. But credit where the sons, he's had several, uh, but none of those are producing on. And uh, so the Stars Pride line is looking to be is on the verge of uh, uh, ending. Now there may be some some uh, little saving on the horizon because there's a couple of French sires, a French and bred sires, including one that's uh, Sweden, um, that uh, are being introduced to uh, North America through frozen semen by uh, uh, in Kentucky. And uh, they are uh, Star Sprite line sires and very well accomplished in, in Europe. Their sons and grandsons are ready cash. Uh, the top, one of the top sires, if not the top sire in, uh, in Europe right now. Anyway, the Victory Song is the other, is another line. And that is very much alive. Of course, Walner was a tremendous success this year He's with his first crop at, at the races. And that looks like a, a line that's going to uh, move along. Conway Hall's full brothers, Angus Hall and Andover Hall, however, Andover Hall had, uh, and, uh, had, uh, had um, a very good son that, uh, who's turned out to be a dud at stud, basically. Conrado Hanover had some great horses, but no sons that are of consequence. Same with Angus Hall. Conway Hall, student in first in Kentucky and then in New York, where he had Winsong's legacy. Winsong's legacy died after having only three or four crops. He's lost in the fire at, uh, at his stud in, uh, in New Jersey. But he had chapter seven in his last crop and chapter seven has gone on to produce Walner. So that, that, is the, that line is very much alive. Then the other line here is, is the interesting one here for people with pacers. It's the line that brought us Matt Scooter. It's Ludrette Scooter, Matt Scooter, Maltry, and some be somewhere, and Captain Treacherous. It's a trotting bread line that had pacers emerge from it, which is, it wasn't uncommon. Worthy Boy up here had a number of, of uh, pacing sons, as did Volomite. Samson Hanover being one of them. So there's, uh, there, there, there are pacing sires that have come from trotting lines before. And in fact, you see that pop up occasionally that you'll have a, a, an individual that co combines pacing and trotting front lines like Goo Goo Ga Ga is a, is a big name over in Sweden right now because although his top line is by a pacing sire, he's out of a trotting mother line and fits well with the style and with the mares over there has produced a couple of very excellent horses and is in great demand as a sire. And then of course he had, he had um, the son this year uh, that won the uh, Hamiltonian and is now going to stand at, uh, at Hanover Shoe Farms. Interesting to see how that develops. So those are the sire lines. And here's the quotation, return to the side of the best part of his dad in the care and training of the trotter and pacer. So I'm just gonna get out of this here now. And uh, go back to our list of stallions here. Now this list of stallions, I've got them color coded with respect to the sire lines. The red ones are Metaskipper lines. The blue ones are Adios, Abercrombie lines. The green ones are uh, 
a direct scooter, not scooter, somebody somewhere, like they're somewhere fancy by somebody somewhere. And, and these are the maternal lines that are active in the stallions that you're going to try to return to. When you say return to the Sar, the best part of his dam, for instance, Arthur Blue Chip's dam is Arts Place Annihilator. So a basic pedigree match to Arthur Blue Chip would be to bring back mares that have Arts Place or another son of, or another Adios Sar, and Annihilator or another Metaskipper like Sar. Similar to Articulator, would you, you'd be looking for Big Town or No Nukes. And all the way down, we'll go down to the room and we'll show you what happens with some of the ones that are active, articulator, for instance. You'll see that this big tanner, no nukes, is an important component of his success. As is the, uh, the Abercrombie Metaskipper combination in the bottom of the Arthur Blue Chip. And you'll see that for, uh, I'll point out the ones that I've shown. Uh, and to the extent that they haven't got offspring, we can go into the stallion pattern finder up here. And we can find stallions that have similar maternal combinations. And that's what we will be looking for. So I'm going to start first of all with a little uh, uh, a look, a little look at uh, our friends. Wally was, uh, we lost him far too early. He was a brilliant breeder. Uh, here's Big Towner. Uh, not Big Towner, but uh, drop off. So here, drop off. Here's the big towner line up here. His maternal lines are Shadow Wave and Guinea Gold, both of which go through Haldale. Haldale, Haldale. This is his dam an Albatross, Columbia George, Bull and Hanover. Haldale, 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 Haldale. This is uh, maxing out that. That, that process of return to the side of the best blood of his dam. His dam is Haldale, Haldale, and you're bringing back four Haldale lines to a sire that is Haldale, Haldale materially. That's about as uh, good a double up as you can. That's, that's called a double return. That's the, if you're, it's a double return twice back into the, uh, the maternal lines. And that was the basic pedigree match that I discovered way back when I first started looking at top horses and trying to figure out what is it in the pedigrees that, what patterns are there in pedigrees that, that um, produce great horses. So this was drop offs pattern. And if you look at the, the best ones by drop off, what we should see again are mares that bring back these Haldale lines. And uh, because that's his strength, that's his maternal strength. That's the best blood of his dam. So did that actually happen? But look at the offspring of drop off. I said he was one of the greatest sires in, uh, in maritime history and he certainly was, look at this. There aren't many salary stallions since him who have produced this many top individuals, ones that made over $100,000. That's kind of rare in the Maritimes. He's got almost a whole, full, whole page, There's about 30 of them here, 30, actually 30 all the other. And that is really exceptional. The only other stallion in recent history that perhaps is close to that is Western Paradise. And another sire that uh, um, stood um, part of his career, at least at Woodmere Farms. And he too, when you look at his pedigree, you will see that he is Abercrombie met a skipper maternal. And when you have those kind of combinations for a very simple, uh, open maternal line um, that can be brought back from all kinds of mares. There are many, many mares in the Maritimes and elsewhere that have, for instance, Abercrombie met a skipper in her lines in their pedigree or 
in the case of Dropbox, to many skipper lines. And I can show you them here. I just click up here, it gives me a profile of the individuals in the pedigree. So here we have Sir Hugh Saber. I'm gonna show his pedigree here. He's an interesting one. Read by Elwood Lawton. Now here's, uh, again, here's, here's the maternal lines of drop-off. Meta Skipper, good time. Here's the, the, the dam here. Meta Skipper, good time. Bring back to the sire the best part of his dam. Meta Skipper, good time. Meta Skipper, good time. Produces the best son a big time. And there's another Adios line here. Adios being the uh, same, another the Haldia line as well down here. But the primary thing here is this, this uh, return of the, of the, of the Haldia um, lines, Metaskip and Huta. And so we'll look at the, let's look at a couple more. You're going down, next best one. This is something that is, was very common uh, 10, 15 years ago, back in the, in the 90s, early 2000s, to see albatross three by three across the pedigree. It produced, produced a lot of great horses. Um, and why not? This is Meta Skipper, Meta Skipper. And here's Meta Skipper again, Dale Frost, uh, which is Hal Dale. So you got this, again, you got this Haldale, Haldale combination, Haldale, Haldale combination here. And you can go down through here and you'll see it. Here's it again. Here it is again through two sons of, uh, or two Adios line stars. Here again, here again, here again, here again through two Metaskipper line stars. And again here, and again here, and here, and here, all the way down. There's an exception here, I got to go. There's always an exception to the rules in, the, in, in, in these sorts of things. But you don't breed for exceptions. You breed, you breed to emulate the, the, the majority success. And consistency is a hallmark of standard red breeding. If you can't produce consistency with a sire or with a, or with a mare, then you're in trouble. And what causes the problem with consistency is strange bloodlines like Dwayne Hanover's and Axworthy line. And uh, the odd tar heel line now, which doesn't fit with anything in the, uh, now. Uh, there's a lot of uh, volumite in the, these pedigrees as well. There's some GNAB, which is the big towner line. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. But the consistent part of the pedigrees is that you have this line breeding or inbreeding, line breeding to, and inbreeding to these Haldale individuals. Now, mind you, 20 years later, uh, those individuals are now back in the pedigrees and we're looking at different ones. But I, I just wanted to show you that to give you an idea of just what, what, what is happening or what has happened in the past with that particular approach of return to the side of the best part of his dam. So here's Arthur Blue Chip. Now Arthur has some early falls. He, was, he stood in uh, Ohio. And uh, so has some offspring. Some of them are just three years old. This is the oldest one, this is Lady Arthur, one of, the, one of his first crop, and the best one so far. And if you do a profile on that one, you see, what do you see? You see Matt Scooter, Abercrombie, and Onuks, Abercrombie again. This brings up, I mentioned that uh, in, in, in drop-offs a case, most of the pedigrees are very straightforward pedigree matches of two lines coming back and two lines being in the maternal lines. Lady Arthur is another special situation. It's a, it's a, um, it's a pedigree pattern that I call the double-double. 
And that's something that has popped up in recent years, the last 10 or 15 years that I've noticed, brought to light by my association with uh, McWicket. But anyway, I'll, I'll have a look, I'll show you this. Here's the pedigree of Lady Arthur. She's Matt Scooter No Nukes, but her full pedigree is Matt Scooter Abercrombie No Nukes Abercrombie. Or Adios, Adios, Matt Skipper, Matt Scooter. And if you look up here, you got here's the Abercrombie line. Here's the Meta Skipper line, two albatross. And the sire of uh, Arthur Blue Chip and Shadowplay and his maternal line of Matt Scooter and Adios. So you have a Matt Scooter, Adios, Adios, Meta Skipper. Matt Scooter, Adios, Adios, Meta Skipper. All four lines in the dam are in the maternal lines of the, of, of the sire and his sire. That's a, what I call a double-double pattern. Why is that important? Well, I mentioned McWicket. This is the first one I spotted, but it's, it's not, there are many when I started looking for it. And especially amongst the very top individuals of the sport. Here's McWicket. His maternal lines, his dam, there's a Metaskipper through no nukes, an Abercrombie, and another Metaskipper and a Matt Scooter. Matt Scooter being a Volamite line here. You see along at the end here, makes it very simple. It's the coded, letter coded, is Volamite, Metaskipper, Adios. What do you got up here? Volamite, Metaskipper, Metaskipper, and there's the Adios line in here. If you look over here, they're summed up on underneath the names, MMVA. Those are the four sire lines in Macardo, maternal lines. Here are the four sire lines in, in Western Sabra, MMVA. That's a double double pedigree. I'll show you another one. He's the he, uh, second fastest horse in the world and, uh, and uh, the richest uh, stallion. So here is always be Mickey. What do you see here? Big Town or Albatross. First thing that meets your eye, Big Town or Albatross. Return to the side of the best part of his dam. But also we have Abercrombie, uh, two Adios lines down here. And here's the Adios line up here, another meta skip. But this is a combination, the maternal lines up here are a combination of Abercrombie, meta skipper, and Big Towner. And here we have Abercrombie, uh, not Matt Skipper, but it's the Adios line and Big Town. This is another double double pedigree. I could go on and show you dozens of these. Uh, there's another pedigree uh, that works for trotters too. Not Ham Nalor. Ham Nalor Hanover was bred by uh, Hanover Shoe Farms, but actually it was bred by uh, Pete Spears, who was associated with Hanover Shoe Farms, no longer there, but uh, he was in charge of the pedigree side of it. And this is one of his choices. And he was familiar with the double double pedigree because we had discussed it at Pedigree Camp back 10. 12 years ago. And here we have a trotter, swan, the sire, the swan for all. Valley Victory, Baltic Speed. That's actually line bred to Baltic Speed. And here we have, here's the Valley Victory, and here's the Speedy Crown. Of course, Baltic Speed goes back to Speedy Crown here. So there's the two Speedy Crown lines. Here's a Super Bowl line. Here's a Super Bowl line. Here's a Florida Pro Arnie Amherst line. Here's an Arnie Amherst line here. Arnie Amherst, Valley Victory, or Speedy Crown, Speedy Crown, Super Bowl. Arnie Amherst, 
Super Bowl speed cross speed crown, a double double pedigree. One of the fastest and richest trotters in North America, and not alone. Um, I could, I, as I say, I could show you several of these, but I think I've made the point that there are pedigree patterns that exist that are worth looking for when you're matching up your mare. Because that's what gets you top performers. It's not just buying the sire. You're not just buying a stud fee. You're buying a pedigree. You're creating a, and you're creating a new pedigree. And the pedigree of the sire has in some way to connect to the pedigree of the mare. And if it doesn't, you end up down here with a zero alongside your name in the winnings column. And unfortunately, there's far too many of those. So that's Arthur Blue Chip. Now we could look, if you look at Arthur Blue Chip, you'll see um, that he's, um, his maternal lines are similar to a couple of other stars, like World of Rock and Roll. And if, and if you wanted to get more detail, on what works uh, for uh, what, what might work with Arthur Blue Chip, given that he's early yet in his career and he hasn't had the opportunity to uh, uh, meet, uh, get the perhaps uh, all of the right mares that he needs. Well, by the way, I wanted to show you this. At least Mascur, I'm gonna see if there's any other ones out of Sons of Matt Scooter. So I'm just gonna filter by selection. And here we have four that are, have similar combinations maternally. Here's two that sold this year, Red Dirt, Red Legate, Wooden Beer Night. I think uh, both of those individuals have really good chances to be top Colts, just based on the comparison to Lady Arthur. And then both of them have full sisters this year that are going to the sales. And again, if I was going to the yearly sales, I'd be looking at both of those very closely. Again, because of the similarity to an established top performer. So that's what you can do when you look at profiles, because it does, it is worthwhile. Because what's worked for one up here has a real good chance for what working with a similar maternal sequence. But here's World of Rock and Roll. His, uh, his maternal lines are Art Space and I are almost identical. And, um, and like um, Shadow Play, Shadow Play was a, a Western Hanover line with a maternal line of direct scooter and Adios. Same here. So this is almost a clone uh, of. Um, of Arthur Blue Chip. So how did he do? Standing in Illinois, so he's not in the, in the greatest state, but he's done rather well. He's a 15% sire at this point, which is good. That's a means, what that means is of his ones of racing age, he's getting 15% of them to the, to the races and making money. When you consider that the overall success rate is, let, as I said, it's five or six percent. The fifteen percent is obviously uh, well three times better. It's pretty good. And if you look at the profiles here, what do you see? Same thing we saw with Arthur Blue Chip. Combinations of Adios and Meta Skipper. Adios, Meta Skipper, and occasionally you'll you'll see a big tanner coming in here. This is interesting to me because. Quite often, Big Tanner and Abercrombie seem to be surrogates, seem to be almost equivalent to each other across pedigrees, because you'll see this happen. And here's again, Abercrombie, Metascaper, Abercrombie, Metascaper, Abercrombie, Metascaper, all down through. And not, in, not entirely all the way, but I mean, his very best ones certainly show that, and a lot of the ones down below. There are always exceptions. And, and you can look at something like this, uh, 
and wonder why that worked. Because there's no Abercrombie in there. But I'll show you why it worked. And this is the third pedigree pattern that you should be looking for. You have a Metaskipper line sire up here. And you have a mare down here that's inbred to the Metaskipper line. Here it is here, Metaskipper line, Metaskipper line. That's a pattern that shows up a lot in trotters, but even, but it still shows up quite a bit in Paisley's as well. I'll show you one of more recent, but particularly in, in uh, Abercrombie line sires, it seems to be something that works. Um, I'm going to show you an example of that pattern here. It's a little bit more striking. This is Jimmy Freight. He's by an Abercrombie line sire, sports writer, and he's out of a mare that's inbred to Abercrombie. So you can see that very plainly there. So that's what's called the top and bottom of TV pattern. And so it's, a, it's another pattern that if you can't find anything else that works, maybe you try something else, something like this. Try to find a side that'll give you a TV pattern. Some of the four, five out of the top seven by Sweet Lou are bred this way. And why is that in, uh, of interest? I'll tell you why. Here's Moneymaker. Greatest trotter of all time, money-wise. What was her secret? Speedster, speedster, speedster. A speedster line star, inbred speedster. So is that a fluke? No, it's not a fluke. In fact, there are some trotting stars in particular uh, whose best ones are all bred that way. Primarily, they're sons of or Muscle Hill and sons of Muscle Hill. If you wanted to buy a Muscle Hill and you bought one that didn't have, that wasn't inbred maternally to the Valley Victory or Speedy Crown line, you basically had no chance if you look at what worked. But all kinds of them sold for all kinds of big money, but people didn't realize that. But the smart breeders, more buyers, would look at a pedigree and see what the combinations are that work and would pick that out. Maybe they wouldn't, but I would pick it out for them if they wanted to, so. And a lot of them have had great success doing that. So that patterns are important, pedigree patterns are important. So let's, let's have a look at some of these other ones we had. Articulator on the list here. It's the next one down. Articulator is better. We is, as we showed you before, he has a big tanner, no nukes internally. And also up here, he has Metaskipper Adios in the bottom end of Iris Cape. By the way, if you look at, if you look at his pedigree, you'll see that, you'll see that um, there's the most happy fellow Adios, and there's the Adios most happy fellow and his pedigree, across the pedigree. So it's a basic pedigree match he, he's got with the addition of the, uh, you know, there's a double of a valve across, across the pedigree too. But, so what worked for him? He's had quite a few, had some nice ones, quite a few nice ones. One of the better stars standing in the Maritimes, obviously, that's why he got 50 mares last year. Oh no, that was, I'm talking about malicious. Articular and still breeding, so he's got, he's only breeding one or two, he's got uh, infirmity problems, so. But he's, he has been a great sire for the Maritimes. Look at this. And if you look at the profiles, the very first one you see is two out of the top three of this big tanner Metaskipper combination. 
Here's the big tanner and the skipper. His very best one. I'll match flat jack. Count it down. Metaskipper, big tanner, adios, metaskipper. Metaskipper, adios, big tanner, metaskipper. Double, double pedigree. Same story. The best ones have the best pedigrees. Here's one that's almost identical, Ramblin' Lily. One of the best mares that ever paced around the maritime, maritime bred mares. Why was she so good? Meta Skipper, Adios, Big Tanner, Meta Skipper. Big Tanner, Meta Skipper, Meta Skipper, Adios. Another double double. Also has, you see these things popping up in red. This is another aspect of pedigree matching or pedigree importance that, uh, that you might want to get involved in. It's a little bit more complicated, but it deals with maternal lines. And the ones that are in red here, significant are individuals that are doubled across the pedigree in what's called X factor position. Now you may or may not subscribe to the X factor story, but if you read about it, you'll see that there's a lot of validity to it. It basically means that there's something being carried on the maternal line that when it's doubled up across the pedigree, especially in the filly, it produces good results. And you can see here, these are all the X factor traces in, in the pedigree, in the dam. And these are the X factor traces in the sire. Now, two of the most X factor important X factor traces are these ones that I marked A2 and N2. This is a mare called Helen Hanover, and this is a mare called Margaret Parrish. These are inbred mares back in the 30s. 20s and 30s. You think that's too far to go? No, not when it comes to maternal lines and maternal inheritance. Because that sort of stuff, when it comes forward and is doubled across the pedigree like this, produces dynamite horses. Ramblin' Lily is, is uh, inbred to both Helen Hanover and Margaret Parrish across the pedigree. And for a filly, that's great news. So that's just another aspect of pedigree matching that is important to look at. And anybody that's looking to breed good fillies uh, to retain, for instance, for, uh, for breeding, not that you can guarantee it'll turn out to be a filly, but you pick a sire to breed to a, a mare that carries those, uh, uh, and both the mare and the sire carry those individuals, maternal connections. That puts you in a position to be, have a mare that could be pretty potent. And you'll see a lot of good mares like that. You'll find even colts, although they can't inherit uh, um, these factors from their sires, they can inher inherit them from their dam, at least coming up from, from the maternal line. And for a colt to be out of a, uh, a mare that's inbred to uh, um, Helen Hanover or Marion Parish sometimes works very well for them. One of those such is on the island, malicious. It's a pedigree that I pointed out to Ian, pointed out the importance of Helen Hanover to him. He ended up buying the horse and um, turned out pretty good. Um, so that's um, articulated. And you can see that no, it's not all big towner, big towner. There's another one here because we don't have a, many big towner lines internally here, but you can see definitely there's what, there's, what there is in here uh, is a consistent pattern of, for instance, the Abercrombie line, or Adios line in virtually all of them, not all, but most of the top ones have at least that. And they also are either line bred or inbred to the meta skipper line. So you can create a little, you can look at the sire like that and create a little sentence that says to you, if I want to breed a mare to articulate, I need to have a mare that's line bred 
or inbred to Meta Skipper and has an Abercrombie or Adios line, such as Brett Hanover, somewhere in the pedigree. And if you're trying to breed a mare to articular that doesn't have that, then your chances are you're not going to get a winner. You're not going to get a really good one. There's probably all kinds of them down here that you know didn't make it, but if there's a couple there that have there's a big town with no Abercrombie, he's one with neither here, made it to the races, but didn't make anybody any money. So the bottom line is you're trying to make money either as an owner or by selling colts that will make money as a breeder. So that's Articulator. Articulator too had, uh, well, he didn't really have any other sires that I looked at that were particularly close to him. But. So now we have Bet the Moon. New sire last year, very successful at stud. He got a lot of mares. I think mostly on the reputation of a predecessor uh, that uh, produced the uh, Woodmere Steel Deal. Woodmere Steel Deal was by a son of uh, Better's Delight. I mean, let's put his pedigree up here. See what we can see. The Woodmere Steel deal was out of a Western ideal, and actually a line bred no nukes mare that had Abercrombie and Meta Skipper in it. So it's three, three Meta Skipper lines and an Abercrombie line here. Here we have two Meta Skipper lines, an Abercrombie line, and here's this big counter kind of wild card here. As I say, sometimes it's like a surrogate for a for Abercrombie. But what's important here, um, perhaps also, is that here's a Meta Skipper line SAR, and here's a mare that's inbred to the Meta Skipper line down here. It's got the double Meta Skipper line inbred here. So it's a TB pattern. It also has a strong cross across here between Western Hanover. The, brought the no nukes brought back twice here from the mare. If you consider Western Hanover line as being the, the strength of the, in the mayor of, uh, uh, of Steel and Hanover, then um, obviously bringing two lines of it back helped that situation. And the fact that this is Abercrombie Albatross didn't hurt either because here you have Abercrombie and Stephen Herbert, who's the, like Albatross, the son of Meta Skipper. So this is a very good pedigree. Obviously, produce a tremendous horse, and he's doing real well up, well up in country too. Looks like he's going to drive on and become perhaps one of the best maritime breads ever. So here's Bet the Moon. Look at his pedigree. I told you about sires that have open pedigrees. Here's another one. Here you have a, a, a sire that has Abercrombie Meta Skipper maternally. That's a very, what does it say, it's a very open pedigree. You can breed a lot of different mares to this sire. That doesn't mean you can breed every mare with that combination. That because, like every other sire, there are particular nicks and so forth that that uh, that you might want to be aware of. Uh, one, th one of the things I always like to do when I'm looking at new sires, quite often. A sire will follow in the footsteps of his own sire. The maternal line up here is Abercrombie Albatross, which is basically what this is here too. This is a strong return, maternal return of Abercrombie Albatross across the pedigree. In fact, uh, there's Albatross again. And so this, this is not only a top and bottom pedigree, but it has that Strong maternal cross and an open an open pedigree here. So he would appear to have a, a, a pretty good future, and he was a very good horse too. Good record, lots of money made. But let's have a look at Sons of Better's Delight and see what's happening. 
I can go up here and in the pedigree and I can just click on this button called Save Position. What this will do, it'll bring up every horse in the pedigree that is in the same position as Better's Delight. In other words, all the horses that are by sons of Better's Delight. Uh, there's a lot of them out there, so this might take a little while to turn up, but what it will show me is just how important certain individuals in, in uh, the pedigree are. Which ones are being repeated? Chances are, and I know this already, it's Abercrombie Albatross. And in particular, it's Albatross or some other son of Meta Skipper. It shows up in the best of, of the sons, uh, uh, offspring by the sons of Better's Delight. And uh, taking a little bit longer than I, I would like, but uh, as I say, there's a lot of uh, individuals in the, in the pedigree, in the, in the uh, database that, that uh, I read that way. There we are. Okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna take the New Zealanders out of here. I'm just gonna do the North, North America at once. Because then, as you can see, it's like it's 18.5 percent. If you were if you were doing adding in the Australian ones, they tend to breed all kinds of horses, so uh, you can't go by that percentage. So we, we're we're going to we're just going to go by North America. Yeah, that's better. Horses, sons of better delight, are 31.3 percent. That's tremendous. That's why they're so popular. So here they are. So what do they look like when you when you look at the uh, profile? What do you see? We're looking for albatross, weren't we? Albatross, Metaskepper, Nero, son of Metaskepper. Albatross, 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 son of Metaskepper, albatross, albatross, son of Metaskepper. Here's the odd different one. Albatrosses, albatrosses, you know, it goes on and on. If you want to see what the more recent ones are doing, you can just sort it up here. These ones don't count because they're 20s and 21s. There's no production there, but it's always nice to look and see what have you done for me lately when you're looking at a situation like this. Um, here we're in the ones that are just money made. Scarlet Hanover, Albatross, 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 Metaskepper. Still happening, even in the, even in the ones to date. That's the most important individuals, the best ones by Sons of Better's Delight have that connection to albatross. And why not? Because that's what's inbred into them. Not only a Son of Better's kept it there, but there's a Son of Better's kept it here in this place. And this one's inbred, this one's been bred to albatross. And so logically, the strength of this stallion and his maternal the strength of his uh, Return to the side, the best part of his dam. The best part of his dam is albatross, to my mind, being inbred to it. And it fits in with Better's Delight. So to the extent that he gets mares to bring back albatross in some form, or another son of Meta Skipper, such as most happy fellow, could be Nero, could be whatever, that will certainly help. And to the extent that you can find mares that also have Abercrombie or Big Tanner, as it turns out, that will certainly help too. So let's look at blood money now. Blood money is uh, by Sweet Lou. To come to the island to see if he can do better than he did last year, he stood. He stood in New Brunswick uh, last year, but he was 
training back to get raced and there was a bit of a conflict there. But um, but money is, uh, is a nice horse too. He's a sweet loon. And uh, typical of a lot of the good sweet loons, look at this. Sweet loons and Abercrombie line sire. Blood diamond is inbred to Abercrombie. So not only that, so he's a TB pedigree. Not only that, if you look at up here, you know, this is a combination of Metaskipper and Ab Ab Abercrombie lines. And here we have Metaskipper, Metaskipper, Adios line, Metaskipper is a double double pedigree. So he's got a lot of things going for him pedigree wise. Uh, he's Western ideal arts place. Again, that's the kind of open paternal line that uh, can fit up a lot of good mares. So he's a, he's really a good opportunity as a sire. And he's an Abercrombie line sire, which is important too, because when you're breeding and you have a whole lot of Metaskipper line mares out there, which is probably 75% of them in the Maritimes, it's nice to have an outcross sire like this, an Abercrombie line to breed to, especially if it'll fit that, the paternal lines. Because if you have a mare that's a no nukes line mare, it would be logical to go to this, uh, not, not to this sar. And uh, of course, you, you could go to a sar that has combinations of no nukes and Abercrombie. And that fits a lot of mares. That's the kind of match that we were searching for for our own stallion, flame proof Arbor. We'll look at that later. But, and there's two or three sires in the Maritimes like that and have that maternal combination. And it's turning out to be a decent uh, thing to look for because you have sires out there already that are, uh, have the same kind of combination, Western ideal, our place, that, uh, that are showing up now. Um, Huntsville, um, by some be somewhere has that kind of his Western, Arts place, same as, uh, same as um, Flake of Hanover. So obviously, I'm watching closely his success to see how well it matches what I think they should be bred to. And that's what you should do. You should look up, look up uh, these. Um, a, a similar sire is uh, the Blood Money, the State Treasure. So if He's standing in Ontario and he's a regional sire, but he used to, and, and, and perhaps uh, he's not going to get the, the super performers that you expect, but here's his pedigree. He's an Abercrombie line out of a mare that's in red to Abercrombie. He's a TB pattern. Very important. Uh, good solid pedigree. His maternal lines are both Metaskipper lines here too. So there's two Metaskipper lines here. And he's Metaskipper Adios too. So he's a double-double pedigree, as well as a TV, made $2 million. That's what good pedigrees do with good patterns. Now he's had some falls. And I helped uh, Mr. McDonald, who owns this, with his and picking out some of these mares that he wanted to breed to. I was pleased to see that a couple of them uh, are in amongst the, his top individuals. But because here are, here are three of them here, I recommended that he look for mares that have the same um, TV pattern being inbred to Abercrombie. And three out of the top four ones are just exactly that. Aaron Eves uh, was bred by a friend of my sons uh, who does pedigree matching, but I'm not exactly sure what he saw in, what he saw in here other than it was the cross uh, here. But there is a, you know, here's a Metaskipper, Abercrombie, Abercrombie, Metaskipper, basic pedigree cross in here. So it's, um, it's a, obviously a decent pedigree and it worked. And uh, 
just the best one. My state treasurer. But as you can see, there's a number of these that uh, were on, that were bred in that first crop that, that turned out, you know, to be pretty good. They all turn out. Uh, quite a few of them have raced. And uh, there are some of these down in 2018 that didn't make it for whatever reason, but still there is a high, fairly high percentage of success in there. So that's uh, blood money. I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit here and look at some of these other ones here. Here's Boom Boom Valley Kill. He's a green, that means he's a direct scooter and that scooter line is higher. His maternal lines are residential ball and fundamentalist. They're both met skipper lines. And again, he's, his, his sire is Mach 3, who's Abercrombie, most happy fellow. So like Blood Money and Bet the Moon and a number of other stallions in, in, in this list, they improve Force and Fury, uh, Machiavelli Keel, Malicious, My Man Charlie. They're all very similar in maternally. Here's another one, Stormbridge Terror. Uh, these all have basically combinations of Abercrombie and Metaskipper. And they're all targets for the same kinds of mares. And when you're looking at them, you're going to have to look for special connections, close, as close a connection militarily as you can. For instance, going back to uh, something like uh, flame proof, you'd want to get mares that have no nukes arch place if you, or Abercrombie if you can get it. Uh, boom, boom, Balakil. You want to get here. This is a camp fella, meta skipper uh, combination in the mirror. You want to try to get a basic combination, and with any luck at all, you could end up with a, a double double pedigree. When you compare the ones that you picked out, they're going to go with the double double or the TB pedigree ones, the ones that give you that special pedigree. But the first step is to find a sire that has the strength of your mare. And this, this particular guy is, is as I say, is Cam Fellow Line and Meta Skipper. There's another one down here, Machiavelli Keel. It's a, it's a full brother. First time I've ever seen full brothers standing in the Maritimes, but it'd be interesting to see which one turns out to be the better. They were both decent horse, decent race horses. And uh, there's, uh, there's somewhere fancy. He's come into the standing. He's a, he's a, uh, some beast somewhere, same Matt Scooter line. His maternal combination is Arts Place Tyler B. Now, Tyler B is a, is a camp fella, similar to Cam Fella. He's a, he's the son of most happy fella. So there's not many mares around with Tyler B in them. So it's, he may have trouble finding a close combination there, but. You can step back to, to most happy fella and then step forward to camp fella, and you probably have a decent equivalent, especially since you got camp fella already here in the, in the dam of uh, some beach somewhere. So, art space camp fella combinations would be probably a decent, and maybe even the no nukes line. But uh, my preference for him would be to concentrate on Batter's Delight or. Other Cam Fella line sires or combinations of Abercrombie and, 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 and Cam Fella. Um, you can have a look at Boom Boom. Won the North America Cup, so he was a decent racehorse. Well, here he is. He's a. Uh, you can see his maternal lines are the three meta skippers and the holiday line here. Um, here you have a meta skipper, meta skipper, and a couple holiday lines here. So he's a double double pedigree. Yeah. 
And here's the, uh, the maternal line, so the cam fella, and there's Skipper Axe and Alvin Trout's line here. Even had a couple of mares in Ontario, but nothing happened there. But we'll see how he does down here. He's certainly he got a uh, probably mares down here that'll fit. So we step down here. Here's here's a fearless Diablo. You know, he's one of only a handful of. Abercrombie line stars, we have Proven Lover, Fearless Diablo, Front Money, Dick Later. Fearless Diablo would be, I'd recommend the same sort of thing as we did for, uh, as we're looking at for Blood Money. He has a similar kind of maternal sequence because he's met a skipper Abercrombie up here. It's no nukes Abercrombie, but here it's Camphala Abercrombie. So again, I would look for, for you know, TV pattern possibilities, pairs that are inbred. To, Abercrombie has, has good possibilities for, for him, but also mares that have that Abercrombie Camphala combination. I'm not sure if you'd find they'd find one with a big counter line in it, but you never know. There are some around. There's some mares around that have uh, drop off and other other uh, big counter lines in them. So we can look at Fearless Diablo. You can see uh, here's the Camphala Abercrombie and his maternal lines. Um, let me see, what did I find for him? Actually, there is a sire that's similar. His name is actually this big guy, he's out in Illinois. You can see he's Camphala Adios maternally, and I have a combi line with Albatross in, in here as well. So this is, of course, this, um, is uh, inbred to the Albatross line, not necessarily the same, but I mean, there's, there's enough similarity there that perhaps there's something you can pick off of the offspring involved. So here we have Ashley's big guy, and these are the ones that he's done best with. Here you go, adios, adios, adios combinations here, Abercrombies. And it's, uh, there's the Metascaper, here's an Albatross, an Albatross, son of Metascaper, son of Metascaper, Albatross, son of Metascaper, Albatross, uh, son of Metascaper, son of Metascaper, Albatross. Son of Metascaper Albatross. This is a pretty similar to what happened with the, with the Sons of Better's Delight, but it's a it's a different star line. But and as far as I can see, there are no there's there's one that's a there's two there minor ones that are TB pattern and that are inbred to uh, the Adios line, but nothing of any consequence, so it doesn't seem to be a factor in his, in his makeup. But you, you could draw some inferences from what you see here that you'd be looking at uh, mares that are blind bred or inbred that have this Abercrombie or Adios combination maternally. So. so that's Fearless Diablo. Um, we'll skip frame proof. We talked about him. I, uh, I'm, I'm looking for mares that are Western arts place combinations. I'll show you an interesting one. The, the mare that the syndicate bought here, just to show you what the sort of thing that we are looking for. And uh, 
should be able to spot it right away, what I've seen in this one. These Western art space, and here you have the Western art space. We're bringing back what's best in his dam. But also in this pedigree, as you can see, here's your Matt Scooter up here, a line up here. And this mare is inbred to Matt Scooter. So this is a TB pattern. So we're, we're going to get the, the benefit of two special patterns here. There's also an interesting um, cross here if it turns out to be a filly. And that wonder of wonders, and Wendy may have her are siblings. So this is sibling cross. And of course, this particular one has Bullet Hanover, which is the Helen Hanover um, carrier. And in fact, if we get fillies out of a mare like this, Flameproof has both Helen Hanover and Margaret Parrish, and this mare has two. So crossing my fingers that what I get out of this one is a filly that I can maybe race and hold on as a brood mare if I survive that long. But that's the kind of looking ahead planning that you have to do if you're, uh, if you're uh, in the breeder's business. You're not in it for just a year or two. Well, you may be if you have no luck. But if you seriously want to be a serious breeder, you're going to do it for the long term. You breed accordingly. So let's go on to the next one here, Force and Fury. We'll just put them over the same mirror and just see what happens. So you have the, you have a, here's the Matt Scooter again, down through the pedigree. Um, this is a Dragons Again line, a Tyler B line, as I mentioned earlier. That, uh, but here you have the own Nukes line here, and you have an arts place up here. So there's some elements of the same. It's not quite the mare that I would want to breed, but it, um, this, if this was a, you know, as, as I mentioned before, if this was, uh, if there was a line in here that had uh, something that was closer to most happy fellow, such as, such as this one is here, like a, a camp fellow line sire in here or here somewhere, that would be of more interest to me, but it still, you know, still might work just on the basis of the, this uh, TV pattern alone. And uh, of course, it's a close association with no nukes across the pedigree as well. You're trying to get as close as you can. You, sometimes you don't get perfection, but it doesn't necessarily need perfection. You need to just have something that works. And um, Force and Fury, uh, he's the son of uh, Captain Treacherous, who's really the top sire in North America these days. And his sons more than likely will do well. So uh, we'll, we shall find out in three or four years' time. Uh, hilarious Halo is. Uh, um, I'll be having a look at them. Not sure if he's long for staying around here. It's a very competitive business and he hasn't been attracting too much attention so far. So here's a cam fellow Abercrombie maternal line. And I don't know where he's been bred to, but we can have a look. He has some that have worked and got there. Here's the Abercrombie Metascaper combination here. This is the dragon again. Um, as I mentioned earlier that the See the best one here. That oh sorry. This best one here is um, you know this uh, most happy fellow Abercrombie, and you have the most happy fellow Abercrombie combination here. So it's just doubling back that into the pedigree. And uh, interestingly, here's the no nukes, and here's an inbreeding to no nukes maternity. So it's a TB pattern as well. So 
these patterns work. They're, they're in the best ones. Mate doesn't, doesn't produce a super mare, but she's a nice mare. She's going to be three-year-old this year and a four-year-old this year, I guess. Did all right for around here, 37,000. Not, not a whole lot of them make that much. Uh, we looked at Mark Balakiel. Malicious is another one that we should look at. Popular sire. We looked at Better's Light Sons earlier and you saw what was working, what seemed to be working for Better's Light Sons. And if you look in here, you'll see much the same thing. Here's the albatross, 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 son of Meta Skipper. There's a camp line. These two are not the same, but all the top ones have that albatross connection here. And they all have that Abercrombie Meta Skipper combination in them here. So this is another case of uh, sons of camp They like mares that are line bred or inbred to Meta Skipper and have an Abercrombie line in there. Hopefully an albatross or, or a line or one by another son of Meta Skipper. Pretty straightforward stuff. My man Charlie is a Mach 3, again, somewhat similar to um, Mach of Alakiel, except he is, he is, that, he is double Abercrombie here. Um, of course, being a son of Mach, Mach 3, everybody thinks, you know, somebody somewhere. He actually has one here, must be in Ontario. So it's a two-year-old this year. Let's see what he did here. Abercrombie, Metaskipper, Abercrombie, inbred to Abercrombie, Metaskipper line. There's some common elements across here. Not outstanding, but it's, uh, like the, for instance, this is an Onuks line. If it was a Campfella line, it would be more to my eye, but the, um, it is ultimately a most happy fellow line. But you can see his maternal line is what it is, uh, Abercrombie, Campfella. And so the preference would probably be to find Mares that are Abercrombie that have Abercrombie can't follow combinations in them. And it's the same up here, Abercrombie most happy follow. So uh, you, you find mares that are combinations of Abercrombie and Meta Skipper without any straight stuff like Matt Scooter or a Big Tanner in it, and then you get double double pedigrees. Ben Shui has been around for a while. We can have a look and see what he's done. So here's Ben Shui. As you can say, he's paternally, uh, he's um, the ones that are working have these Habercrombie Meta Skipper. Western Hanover or whatever, Camelot, Tyler B. See what's talking away. It looks like he's much the best. Here's a most happy fellow line. And as you can see down here, this is a here's most happy fellow, most happy fellow. So this is a TV pattern. And this is this is typical, it would be probably typical of what you see here, and it is. The second best is TB, he says is, as well. This one is, and this one is. So that's the dominant pattern for Peng Shui, is to find mares that are inbred at the most happy fellow line, just as they are here, 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 and here, because that's what worked for the top ones. And 
they all have either, in addition to that, they all have an Abercrombie or a big towner line. So again, look at the best, pretty straightforward. You're going to read the page way, that's what you're going to have if you want to be one of these top ones. Hoover and Lover, uh, Abercrombie line, with, who's all Metaskipper lines maternally. He's had some falls too. He's been around for a while, has, has had some nice ones. So he, <clears throat> again, he's a, as I say, he's, a, he's both as dam as line bread and uh, tomato skipper. And so that's what he favors. He favors mares that are inbred or line bred tomato skipper. You see here, here, here. Here, 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 here. If you look at this particular one. This is Camphala albatross. There's the Camphala, here's the Metaskipper line. Here's the Metaskipper line down here. So, so there's the, the very close double across the pedigree here. And uh, so that's his claim to fame in terms of pedigree match. Worked very well for, for his, uh, his best performer. And that's um, a mare that's in red to Meta Skipper and has a close personal connection across the pedigree. As this one has too with the albatross and albatross, 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 albatross. It's amazing how that shows up. Albatross, the sons of Meta Skipper, and certain sires. Go well, with it, Harry. He's he's had a bunch. First thing I spot here mostly, of course, this one is that, you know, you, you'll get strange ones <coughs> in every group, but this is, a, this is particularly strange. It turns out to be the best filly though. So why? Why would this be the best one? It's line bred. I don't like this personally. I told Bruce this, he, but, and he's bred a number of, uh, there's their line bread among Western Hanover. This one's stretched out a bit more. It's four by four by one, I guess, or two, I guess. But uh, and there is something stuff going on here in the pedigree because you have, you have a big downer across the pedigree, and this is a filly. And as I said before, here's uh, Margaret Parish. Here's Margaret Parish. This is a mare that's in bread to Margaret Parish. And in situations, quite often in situations like this, that's all you need. But here, of course, there are some things going, working for it. It's, a, it's Abercrombie Metaskipper here. Abercrombie being, you know, uh, this is Abercrombie Howdale down here. So there's some, something working across the pedigree. It's not close, but to me, what makes the difference here in this particular one, even though it doesn't fit any particular pattern uh, that I'm familiar with is it's the maternal uh, inbreeding of um, a mare like Margaret Parrish. It's the only way I can explain it. The rest of them are all pretty much straightforward. They're, they're very typical of what worked for Rock and Roll Hanover himself. He liked mares that were, that were Western Hanover or, or uh, Metaskipper line dams that were inbred to Abercrombie, like this, this, and this. And he also liked Abercrombie mares that were inbred to uh, Metaskipper. These would be TB pattern. And especially ones that were, had combinations of Nornux and Albatross, like this. Nornux, Scott, Scott, Skipper. And you can see that's a pretty common 
pattern down through for Roth and Harry. If you look at Roth and Roll Harry, you'll see the same thing. Again, it's a like father, like son. But we all had a lot of good individuals. And, but he had a very distinct pattern in his best. And uh, just as I showed you with Roll with, roll with it, Harry, you'll see that it is a, very much a case of like father, like son. Here we have the Abercrombie ones that are inbred to Minister Skipper. Uh, albatross, 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 most happy fellow. Albatross here. And the, the Meta Skipper line ones, there's the odd Western Hannibal one here, but here's the inbreeding to Albatross. And the, uh, as I say, uh, the Meta Skipper ones were inbred to Abercrombie. You see here, here, and here. It's, you know, every single one of them almost. So that's a very strong pattern that worked well for. Rock and Roll Hanover, and it's something that you would have to, you know, well, if you were going to read to them, that's what you would, kind of marriage you would take to them. A similar side to him, we're going to see him shortly here, is uh, Shadow Play. Um, in fact, I'll put that up here right now. When Shadow Play came to be a stud, I did a stallion analysis for him, for, for Ian and his group. And I predicted that based on the similarity pedigree wise to Rock and Roll Hanover, that you should look for mares that are, have, are similar to the ones that work for, uh, <clears throat> for Rock and Roll Hanover. And for the most part, that's, that's what has happened. It should pop, pop up here. Here's the Meta Skipper lines in red to Abercrombie. This is an Abercrombie big time combination. And here's the Abercrombie lines that are in red to Albatross uh, and another Meta Skipper line. Here's that one, similar situation to here where you have. A uh, big towner Abercrombie combination. This one here is in red to the Meta Skipper line. So it's a slight variation of combination of the two. But if you go down through here, you'll find that virtually all of them have that pattern. Um, here's um, Arthur Bluechip, Abercrombie in red to Albatross. That was the pattern that, uh, that I gave Ian uh, to look for. He also wanted to get these uh, cams, car track lines, is what I look, wanted, wanted him to look for as well. And uh, he bought a couple of them. He bought this one, skipping by, but this, this is then bred to Abercrombie lace pick combination. But it was an old loose line. I wasn't particularly keen on it, but he bought it anyway, and it turned out to be decent. <clears throat> and a number of these he, he bought over the years and has done very well with them. This one he didn't buy, although it was on, this is the first crop, Baby Shadow was in the first crop, and it was on my recommended list. I had a dozen or 16 or whatever it was of the ones that had the pattern I was looking for, and this is one of them. But Ian didn't like her physically. He didn't like the confirmation for whatever reason. Thought she was too small, and she turned out to be the best of any of them. So, He's great at confirmation, but he didn't really appreciate the pedigree all that much. He does, I think, appreciate it a little bit more now. But back in those days, he was very much a confirmation man and probably one of the best in the world at that sort of stuff. If I ever wanted to get him, anybody to check over a horse or a mare, it's confirmation, he'd, he'd be the guy to go to. And uh, as a consequence, as you can see, I don't know any other trainer who has as many of his racehorses go to stud as he has. He has five. Five of the horses that he trained and picked out his yearlings based on confirmation and now stallions. 
shadow wave, of course, being the big one. But um, I don't know any other traders like that, that's that kind of a record. So let's um, go with it, Harry. Here's Shanghai Phil. Shanghai Phil again. This guy's been around for a while. So you can pretty much go with what he has produced. Uh, he's very similar maternally to Pan Shui. And, and um, so the profiles should be somewhat similar. <clears throat> but here it is. Um, his best one, Duke Orleans, is out of a mare that's line bred and inbred to Meadow Skipper line. And you see Shanghai High Phil, here's his cam fella. Of course, Meta Skipper line. So this inbreeding from Meta Skipper line makes this a TB pattern. <clears throat> and just like Pang Shui, that's what happened to him. He's, he's leaning towards mares that were inbred or uh, to uh, the Meta Skipper line, just, as, just like this, this one is. Um, this is somewhat unusual to find a mare that's all meta skipper lines here, but uh, there's, a, there's an oil burner connection across the pedigree here. But the, the main thing here is that TB pattern. And if you spot it in a mare you see, in a sari, you think, you know, oh, well, that's, that's the standard pattern that you better, you better follow it. And so, but this one's a little different, champagne fill. Here you have the known nukes across the pedigree, and you got to have a crown bee, have a crown bee, and a metascaper, metascaper. So there's a lot going on in here. Uh, nothing specific other than in terms of pattern, but obviously it worked. You get stuff like that, and uh, you just take it for what it's worth. And any particular star, if you have random kind of happenings like that in terms of the pattern, <clears throat> basically you set them aside, you say, okay, that worked. And if I have a mare that looks like one of these, then maybe I'll try it. But you still try to find what is the, what is the standard pattern for this particular sire? And to me, it's this inbreeding the meta skipper with an Abercrombie line or whatever it is. Uh, also in the pedigree. That seems to be the common factors in here. There's a bunch of big counter stuff in here too, wherever that comes from. We're getting down near the end here. We looked at shadow play generally and Silver Hill Shadow will be again, he'll be a sire that uh, will, um, Probably follow in the, the same along the same lines as shadow play and read to Meta Skipper or line sires that are inbred to, Meta, to Abercrombie, or just like he is. He was one of them inbred to Abercrombie. He was a little different. He, of course, Silver Hill Shadow, he hewed very closely to, uh, to the maternal lines of shadow play. He was first crop shadow play too, and he was on, on my list of the ones I liked. And this is why. As you can see, he's Matt Scooter Adios, and here he is Matt Scooter Adios here. So it uh, made sense that this, is, this would be something that should work. He's also TB because he's Meta Skipper up here and he's Meta Skipper, Meta Skipper here. He's inbred the Meta Skipper. So he's got two shots at it. And it's produced a, a nice horse. Got injured, unfortunately, at three. Otherwise, I think he, he could have been even that much better. Somewhere fancy, we talked about some beach somewheres. And, 
and how you tie the you try to tie to the maternal lines as best you can. Or to place Tyler B, or in the case of somewhere fancy, you're going to be looking for more likely arts place camphella combinations in the mares. Source of pride uh, we haven't looked at yet. Had a good year this year. They took a year off of stud duties. He hadn't been doing all that well, but uh, interesting sire. He's got, he's basically Cam fella, big town and maternal, and he's got Matt Scooter and Albatross. So he's got a mixed combination of higher lines to work with. In situations like that, you're going to have to find mares that are close to this, or you're going to have to find mares that give you a TV pattern with the Metaskipper line. And here's what's worked today. This particular one, here's the Matt Scooter line. Uh, we would like to have a, a big tanner, uh, an Abercrombie line in there, but we got a big tanner. So, in down here, and it's kind of uh, may or may not be equivalent to Abercrombie, but you do have an Abercrombie direct scooter, direct scooter albatross, better skipper combination up here. So there's, there's some common ground in this particular pedigree, a nice filly. She's line bred to Western ideal, not my cup of tea, but as we've seen, uh, you know, that sort of thing may or may not be important. We, uh, especially with fillies. She has kind of a mixed uh, maternal uh, thing here. She's got Helen Hanover on one side, Mark Parish on the other. This is mystifying, very nice filly. And um, as I say, there's Matt Scooter and Campfell and Big Towner, and there's a lot of common ground across the pedigree here. Nice mare. Salzburg Victor. He's got the big tanner Abercrombie combination down here. And his big tanner Abercrombie, and he also has Camfella. Camfella big tanner. He's got Camfella big tanner in here. In fact, that was bred by one of my friends over in Bill McNeil, who I do a lot of work for over there. We're best buddies. We've been partners in horses for quite a while, off and on. And uh, he follows this stuff fairly closely. So he, he went for that camp for a big town. This horse is doing very well up country right now. Uh, just coming on strong. He's pacing the last quarters from 26 in a bit. So maybe he's got some, got some, we've got some hope for him. Anyway, he's coming back to stud this year. And uh, to the extent that, again, that you can match his strengths. Stonebridge Terror is a uh, half brother to one of the greatest sires that Mars Mar Times ever had. We looked at him, Western Paradise, Open Pedigree, Abercrombie, Meniskipper, Stonebridge Terror, done the same thing, done really well. From not as many as mares, but very similar, very similar results. Uh, Always by Western Terror rather than Western Hanover. But you have this Abercrombie Metaskipper stuff going on here. And it's like, but primarily he is uh, like Western Paradise was. He's a TB kind of a guy. You can see here, here, and here, 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 here. All the top ones here, except for the except for one up here. <coughs> Our TB pattern. Half cut, it's a bit of a straightened individual, and it happens. We look and see what happens here. There are not many, you don't see many mares that have tar heel in them anymore. And you certainly don't see any pairs dextra mares with very many around anymore. But this is a, this is a Haldale 
Metaskipper combination, and this is a Metaskipper Haldale combination. And this is a Metaskipper Haldale combination. So there's some elements across the pedigree that work here. <clears throat> Here's the one that uh, you might be <coughs> which should be interesting. The rev, a different kind of a pedigree. He's standing for the first time. There haven't been many maritime bred sires that have been successful, but he's got as much license as any of them might have. He's a double inbred to brings back Ben Skipper twice to his maternal line. Ben Skipper, Aldeo, Adios, Ben Skipper. But what's weird about him is this inbreeding to the, to the Volomite line. You don't see that very often, this mare. It worked in this particular situation, perhaps produced some kind of an outcross, strong outcross situation sometimes helps individuals and uh, obviously didn't hurt him. And uh, so it's uh, something that, uh, as I say, it happens. Uh, across situations like that are very frequent in Europe, for, for instance. You get <clears throat> mares that have a strong cross to a particular a sire line that doesn't occur at all in the, in the sire and vice versa. They love that kind of stuff over there. But it's, uh, it's uncommon here and I'm not so sure what, obviously uh, uh, I'd line them up with, um, with uh, somebody somewhere, a moth three and other sires that have uh, their uh, uh, mass scooter line. That's what I'd be trying with him. Wiggy Case, another side that's got it, some racing. He's a son of he's a son of uh, Rock and Roll Harbor, and we've, and we've looked at that um, with Rock and Roll Harry. Uh, well, well, sorry, Roll with it, Harry, and other sons of Rock and Roll Hanover. And you can see he's a typical Rock and Roll Hanover. He's He's a campfellow line that's in red, Meta Skipper. Meta Skipper, Meta Skipper. He also has the Abercrombie across the pedigree here, is a good close maternal connection. So that was a you know, strong pedigree. He's in red maternally, Meta Skipper, so he's a TB as well. Very typical, good son of Rock and Roll Hanover. And he will produce the mares that bring back the same kind of combinations as as other rock and roll Hanover sons have done. He's got a few that he, he's got down in uh, Maryland where he started off. But here you have, here's the Abercrombie line that's inbred to Albatross. Here's the Campfellow line that's inbred. This is Albatross again, Clever Innocence and Albatross. Here's the Met Skipper line that's inbred to a combination of Abercrombie and Big Tanner. This one's a little different but he's not in the top three. <clears throat> so you can see the same, the same patterns that work for Rock and Roll Hanover and the Suns generally work for Tobago Case. Um, I think uh, JJ's probably picked up on that because he's, he's been using Benby matching and you can see down here, the ones he's got, here they are, Abercrombie line and Red to Albatross. Uh, Abercrombie and Bed to Albatross. This may not, might not be JJ's, but here's one here. Abercrombie and Bred to Abercrombie. Or, uh, I'm sorry, Cam Carter and Bred to Abercrombie. Another Cam fella and Bred to Abercrombie. These ones will be three year olds this year and just started racing. So the vehicle case has got a shot. He's again, he's you know, precious money Abercrombie is an open, an open maternal line, as I say, it's the sort of thing that you can 
that can work. Ultimate luck, not having a whole lot of luck so far. He hasn't had many uh, sons, hasn't had many falls. Um, and the sons of Kamlock, really, generally speaking, have not, not really done very much. So the, that basically, the side line is basically ended. But the, <clears throat> So here you have, you know, here's the most, it's a Metaskipper line. And uh, I mean, it's in red to Metaskipper line. It's a TD pedigree. <clears throat> and it's no Luke's Abercrombie. And so it should fit a lot of those same mares as a fair number of other maritime mares uh, that we have. Um, it's just that it wasn't much of a racehorse. And, Although he had some speed, he went 51 and 1. But he's not getting any help from anybody. And, but he's got, here's a combination of Abercrombie, Metascaper, Abercrombie, Metascaper, Abercrombie, Metascaper. And there's the right stuff happening in here, but nothing happening on the racetrack. Which is a point I'd like to make too, because. Uh, if there's no depth to the sire, I'm not talking necessarily about um, great um, uh, earnings or high speed or whatever. I'm talking about the family and the ability of the family to produce top individuals, which is very important in the sire as well. If there's no depth to the sire in that respect, then there isn't a whole lot in this particular pedigree, unless you get back in here and see stopper. <clears throat> Then you can't really expect you know, to have a sire that will produce any consistency in terms of performance. So, that being said, I wish I wish them well. And, uh, uh, okay, it's four o'clock. I was planning to cut off now, but I think we're still going to do our trotters. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll take a we'll, we'll take a couple of. Uh, few minutes to have a look at them because they're an important part of the, <clears throat> the readings here on the island, although they're getting scarce. E.L. Rocket, you can see is uh, came to the island last year, has some falls on the ground this year, I guess, going to have some falls on the ground. He's a Super Bowl line star. And uh, he's basically a combination of uh, uh, maternally here. He's got Nova Victory, Speedy Crown, Speed, Speedster, Super Bowl. So he's got a bit of everything. But his pr principal lines are Nova Victory and Florida Pro, which is Speedster and, and Nova Victory, green and red, if you want to look at the charts. In that respect, uh, you know, he's a he's a he's a half brother to E.L. Titan. Uh, so, with the same maternal lines, obviously, <clears throat> there should be some similarity in what E.L. Titan did. You know, mind mind you, Titan is uh, by Muscle Hill, not by the winner, but but um, you can still get some clues from what worked there with the uh, Yale Titan. And here's Titan's best. And he, uh, as you can see, uh, primarily, uh, because he's a muscle hill, he primarily works best with mares that are inbred to speedy ground or speedster line. See, all these top ones are bred that way, virtually all of them. To the extent that they're not, they're what you call double doubles. This one is a double double. Um, because it's got all three. It's not inbred uh, to the uh, speed crown line, but it has all three uh, lines that are in his SAR, in, in the SAR, being Abercrombie, uh, not Abercrombie, but uh, Star's Pride lines, but Nova Victory and, 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 and Speed Crown. Here's another one here, it's a double double. 
This is the TV. This is the double double. Uh, this is a strange one, but this is a, you know, again, this is sort of stuff that happens. Um, every now and then, one out of 20 or one out of 40, you'll get that you can't explain. But it does go back to uh, the maternal lines of, of, uh, of uh, Muscle Hill, who's line bred to Stars Pride, just like these, these mares are. This mare is. So anyway, you can, it may or may not be the case that you're going to get inbreeding to uh, the Speedy Crown as being uh, the major factor here, but you're certainly probably going to find no Nova Victory. As you see, there's quite a few Nova Victory line dams here. And those, so I would, because he's out of a Nova Victory line, <clears throat> Dam, I would probably lean towards uh, Angus Halls and Over Halls, Sons of Them, Mares by Sons of Them, Conway Hall, as being good possibilities for them. Legion of Honor is the son of Vessel Hill, and as we saw with the uh, Yale Titan, their principal uh, line of success is. Mares that are inbred to Speedy Crown. I don't think you even have to look any further than that. But I would, I would make sure that I try to get, in addition to that inbreeding to Speedy Crown, I'd have a, a Star Sprite line in the pedigree somewhere, because that's important in, the, in his own pedigree. Mile Hill Willie is American bread. But it's nice to have him around given the shortage of sires, and, and he does have a decent pedigree. And, um, go down the candy bowl and back down through here. There's some pretty good stuff in here, but <clears throat> his, um, he's a Super Bowl sire, and as you can see, he's out of a mare that's and bred the Super Bowl. So he's a, he's a TB pattern. So that's his main claim to fame pedigree wise. And he does have uh, a line bred Speedy Crown Dam, um, which uh, should serve him well uh, with mares that are similarly bred. If you have uh, mares that are line bred or inbred to Speedy Crown, that would be a logical type of mare to take to, uh, to Mile Hill Willie. And to the extent that you can find them with, uh, with a noble victory line in them as well, uh, that would be worth uh, pursuing. So that's it. That's the, the, the mayor, that's the sires and the maritimes. I uh, thank you very much for joining in. If you have any questions, I am happy to answer them. Just send me an email, norman at pedigreematching.com. <clears throat> also, for those of you that are in the session, if uh, you want uh, if you want to have, let me see, what are we doing here? Let's get rid of that. If you want to have uh, the PMME program, uh, I got a deal for you. You can go to the website, it's pedigreematching.com. Uh, you can download the program, PME, or you can get it, you can drop by and I can give it to you. You want a file stick, a little file stick like this. And when you register it, when you go to register, normally you would have to pay a hundred dollar registration fee, but you just click on the little button that says promo code and type in PEI and you'll get it for free. Uh, there's a little process to get your serial register, serial number registered. You've got, you've got to set up an account first, then you're going to go back to your account to register the, the serial number. But once it comes down to me, I can send you the activation code so you have full access to the program. It's a desktop program, it works on your computer, you put it on a little laptop 
and uh, with a little laptop, you can carry it anywhere you want. And you don't have to tie up your normal desktop so the kids won't be upset with you. But you'll be able to do all the homework you want and uh, dig into it to a considerable depth, just, to, just like I've shown you. Also on the website, there are a number of publications. There's the one, this one that we were looking at called the, um, the Practical Pedigrees, which shows all the SARS by SAR line. Uh, no, I'm sorry, they, they stay on a pattern finder. And another one called Practical Pedigrees. And those are both free downloads. And you can also get the, uh, the book that I wrote on maternal lines of standard reds called um, Queen Among Queens. And that's a free download as well. So go to the website and help yourself to all the free stuff and uh, dig into it, learn as much as you can uh, about the background of pedigrees, the maternal lines, the history of pedigrees. It'll put you in good stead for the future as a reader of champions, I guarantee you. And thank you very much for attending. And I'll stop the share here now. And I hope you learned something. And uh, I have sessions on, the, on, on Zoom every now and then. If you sign up for PME, you'll end up on my contact list. And you'll probably get a notice of the future Zoom period, uh, sessions as they come along. So by all means, do that. Happy to have you join me. Um, anyway, I saw some, <laughs> some things I missed. Some notes. Norm, could you make that a little larger? That's probably the, the list of, uh, of, of the SARS, I'm not sure. And Flame Proof and Captain Crunch have very similar patterns. Not Captain Crunch, but the, there are a couple of, uh, of uh, um, Captain Treacherous ones that do. In fact, uh, I bought a mare, a Western, a Western Hanover mare that was in full to Captain Ahab. And Captain Ahab's maternal lines are Western arts place as well. So virtually identical sire. Uh, I bought two mares, two Western Hanover mares, both bred uh, to Western Ahab, to Captain Ahab. One of them ended up in an Arnold Hagen's barn. He got the one that had the colt, beautiful colt over here. And I sold the, the mare with the filly to somebody in Ontario. So there's going to be an Ontario fold uh, flame proof Hanover sometime this spring. Anyway, that's all my news for now. And I'll, uh, by all means, give me a call, send me an email, whatever. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Thank you. Thanks, Norm.